Yeah, it is a kick. Let's get marching. Uh. The night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh, all right. I've never really quite understand this bar hopping thing. Yeah, we'll just follow you, Robert. I swear we had it. Hey. Irish, I were drinking. It's an Irish pub. Good pun is the whiskey to my heart. <laughs> hmm. Puns are the lowest form of humor, Scoobert. Try harder. Ouch. Am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? <sighs> Come on, Mary. Put your fangs away for a second. Oh, he stood up for me. Yeah. Next round, what are you having? Um, whiskey hasn't failed me yet. <laughs> Let's do it. Mm. Uh, mm. Excuse me. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Mm. Suit yourself. Mary immediately downs her shot in one gulp and burps loudly. Hey. That'll put some hair on your chest. You are... Mm. You're truly a paragon of grace and beauty. Ah. Mary grabs my drink and sips on it. Ah. Hey. Mm. Oh, wow. So Edith's kid snuck some pop brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweatshirted gremlin in the act. So I go up to Edith with a baggie and I'm about to tell her when all of a sudden she just freaks out at me. You're ruining the bake sale. I should have been the PTA president. Your roots are so bad. Blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, it's like we're on a... You ever, you ever seen that show? Uh, that cartoon uh, kids are watching? Uh, ASO? Doesn't matter. What do you do, anyway? I told her I have a brownie, and then everything was going to be fine. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> she ate three. More laughter. Okay, that that's actually pretty funny. Hey. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. Hey. Rest, but, Do you smoke weed? What? Huh? You know, the devil's lettuce. Huh? I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now in a blaze. Uh, you at the feds? That's funny. He liked it. He thought it was funny. <laughs> Lay off your kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Ah. Fine, fine. Hey. Ah. Your jokes become much funnier and much less scary. But it seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just want to spend a long time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. It's her turn to get the round. I, uh, Robert got the first one. I got the second one. Well, actually, Robert got the first and second. Yeah. So it's her turn. No. Hmm. Hmm. Mary needs to sink her teeth into 
a helpless boy. Wow. Nice seeing ya. Come on. Deuces, nerds. Wow. Um, she. Whoa. She grows on you. Does she, though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Well, she does. What about her and Joseph? <clears throat> what about them? You know, they're married. She definitely tried to get my pants the other night, and I. Just across the bar where she's making goo goo eyes at the young guy from before. She looks like he looks like he's being held hostage. Oh, well, that's just a thing she does. She's harmless. Tell it the boy she's hanging off of. Poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> hey, I got him to laugh. Ah, oh. uh, you know, my pegs you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I'm pretty wild back in my. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm -hmm. Still got a little wild in you. There's so much. I'm a child I need to care for. So one, so one thing that you realize when you have a kid, having a kid to care for is that moment when you realize I could kill a man. Ooh. What am I getting myself into? I think you can go shot for shot. There's a one way to look cool here. I grab the shot closest to me and I down it. Barrett looks impressed. He takes a shot and knocks it back. That's one. So? What am I even talking about? He's so cool. He probably hates small talk. Uh, so how are things? I hate small talk. Okay. Too many people, this isn't necessarily you, but too many people think that they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is gonna think of the silence. Hey. <clears throat> uh, uh, if you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh, all right. Hey. And we just sit in silence, drink whiskey. And I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laugh, play card arts, spill beer. Mary gives them all the hard sell to that young man, the young man pretending not to, he got a phone call from one of his friends. Huh, maybe silence is nice sometimes. So you ever kill a man? <laughs> so serious, this character might be based on you. I choke on my drink. <laughs> Fucking excuse me? Uh -huh. You know, watch the light drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes, their dreams. It's a death rattle. Every memory and experience they've ever had, right? It's gone. Now what? Uh, no. Uh, Great. <laughs> me neither. Robert knocks back his shot and motions for me to do the same. I reciprocate. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. <laughs> or am I? I laugh more nervously again! We sip more whiskey and people watch more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the one who excused himself to the bathroom and I assume crawled out the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. <clears throat> Let's roll. Let's shoot her. Let's make like Autobots and roll out. Huh. Sorry. Whiskey. Inside voice. Uh. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Uh. We're gonna make like Autobots. We don't need a Predacon. I look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that he's it's not his birthday. We make our way out of the bar and back into the streets. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, the sidewalk's just coming up right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to, big man? <laughs> You'll see. We arrive at a strip mall. 
<laughs> There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store that looks like it's been closed for 10 years. Finally, a liquor hey. store. Waiter, I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands me one. Cheers. He sits down on the curb and drinks. He motions for me to do the same. It's not really what I expected the night to go to. I take a sip. White Zinfandel? What? Nothing. Just wasn't expecting. It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. A friend of mine in college got me onto it. It's <laughs> so fucking funny. I start to say something. Think of his lecture about value and silence earlier, and I stop. I sip on my wine and watch cars drive by. Oh. Do you want to throw rocks at shit? Oh! Robert suddenly hurls a rock at the shop stop sign. That go dings through the empty parking lot. Mm. That felt good. He presses the stone into my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know. Just do what we're feeling. I look at the rock in my hand. Look at the stop sign. Back the rock. Back the sign. I know it has to be done. This one's for you, Pappy. <laughs> I have unresolved resentment toward my father. I'm gonna express it through property damage. I hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign right into Shut the window up. of the park lot, leaving a crack. Whoa, whoa. Dude. Run. <laughs> I leap up and dart to the nearest alley, wine in hand, and I carry Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure for an right, away from the cracked window that I'm no longer capable of this heinous crime, I try to catch my breath. <laughs> Maybe we strike rock, throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. <laughs> Suddenly my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. I can't argue with that. Where's a good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible in my mouth in the next five minutes. Mm. I know just the place. Follow Robert through a maze of alleys and side streets until we eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint with a bright red neon sign and reads Pete's Piece of Pizza. Ta da! I can see a few exhausted looking workers from behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of the stone ovens. So my oven rumbles again. We go up to the counter and get, and get ready to order. Huh. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh, uh, wait. Scoomer, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? Of course! We wait for a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling into the smell. Cash our hands as a giant slice on a paper plate. So saturated with grease that I'm worried that it'll fall apart. We take our pizzas outside and wander through the alleyways until we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely divine. Pineapple is truly the best pizza topping. Mm -hmm. You said it. Man, I feel way better now. Mm. You and me both. We hear a noise coming from the slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Mm. Got anything of that wild in you? Oh. Yeah, you betcha. Good on you. Robert and I slid through the open door and peek inside. It's completely dark, except for some flickering light. We slowly creep forward, cautious not to be heard or seen. Don't shush me so loud. We come to the end of the hallway and find ourselves standing in front of a movie screen. Oh, this suddenly makes sense. Did we really just sneak into a movie theater like a couple of teenagers? No talking during the movie. We look into the audience and I'm surprised that it's almost completely empty. Save for a few row of teenagers up front, they look annoyed when they noticed us. I'm gonna go sit in the back of the theater and I follow him. It's a romantic comedy, I think. 
A young man is frantically trying to get through New York to find the woman that he finally realizes he's in love with. Kiss. And that's a yell. <laughs> There's nobody to kiss yet. You just want him to kiss the taxi dive taxi driver? Hell yeah. <laughs> Hey, man, keep it down. Oh, damn, that's Ernest Hemingway. <laughs> Vega. <laughs> uh, Ernest. Oh, hey, I Ernest, I know you. you. It's me, your neighbor. Hi. Ernest backs around, embarrassed. I turn back to Robert. He kissed anyone yet? It turns out that, yes, he did kiss someone. He made his way out of the tiny island in New, York, New York to profess his love for a woman who... For who some reason he knew had, would be there. She tells him that they hit the jackpot. He said that they had. And I think there's some subtext I'm missing here. Boo. Oh, you ever heard the expression, love is dead before? Shut up, it's beautiful. No, you shut up. Ernest grumbles. The credits roll. I stand up. Robbie immediately pulls me back down. Hundreds of people worked very hard to make this film happen, and you're gonna sit there and appreciate them, PowerPoint style. Oh, okay. Look at that, Elizabeth Shelton. She worked really hard. I bet she did lots of good um uh, wardrobe design. But thank you, Elizabeth Shelton, for this beautiful film-going experience. And Peter Anders, catering, fed a bunch of people so that they could have. The energy to do their jobs. What a guy. We let the credits roll while Robert individually thanks each member of the crew. Once it's finally over, he makes sure no animals were harmed in the making of this film and we leave the movie theater. So we polish off somewhere out in the parking lot and we polish off our wine. Hey assholes! My knee! What the hell? Aw, little kids. Oh. Uh, what? I don't think you're gonna talk to kids. Uh, what do you guys want? Why'd you go and throw a rock at my knee? This is my good knee. My orthopedist is gonna be so pissed. He's just holding rocks? What's wrong with this kid? So you're just going to see my theater going experience oh and my tell me God. I have to pay? Oh my God. Oh, well, I don't have any cash on me right now. And like movies got really expensive. Are you kidding me right now? Oh, he tries to throw another rock at me. Are you going to play this game right now? Ugh. We ruined it for you. Then what the fuck was that when we watched it? Spearfish, what are you talking about? The movie was pretty crappy in the first place. The rest of the theater was all getting into the act as well. But when you did it, it was just you and a couple of your friends. Hey, take that back. It was a beautiful love story with a genuine acting. You call that good acting? What class, what classicist mainstream slob have you been served your entire life? What? <sighs> you ever seen any Michael Powell? A Matter of Life and Death. 1946, easily the toughest five minutes of love you'll ever witness. Listen, man. What? No, you listen. That popcorn-ass drivel the mass media is shoving down your throat will only make you dumber and sadder. You of all people should strive for a higher standard in the art you consume. Your name is Ernest Hemingway, for Christ's sake. You might say... Oh no, now you done it! Mm. Ernest rushes Robert, screaming like a banshee. Ah! I die between Ernest and Robert, trying to stop the kid. He lunges forward, kicking me as hard as he can in the knee. Fuck my knee! Excuse me? Ah, oh, man. <laughs> Fuck my fucking knee! Fuck my fucking knee hurts! <laughs> Talk like a yeah. Hey, talk, shake, get hit. That's how we say it now. Yo, boxer stance. Oh, hang on. Hang on. 
Here's some, some impressions. Y'all like impressions? Here is, let's see if you can tell me who this is. That's right, hmm, Queensberry rules, I say. Three minutes, three minutes round, one minute, rests in between, no low blows, fish hooks, oh, get your hair, gay grabs or high blows. Ooh, hoo hoo. Wh what? What? And don't even think about pulling an illegal turn style. That's an automatic deduction three points. I. What? You have to designate a second if you're unable to fulfill your role as a main duelist. One of your friends over there looks like he has enough youthful vivacity to handle it. Hey, man, I don't want to get dragged into this. That movie That's sucks. <laughs> it's too late. You two are bloodbound. If he dies, you die. I don't make the rules. Talk to Queensboro. We're just just gonna go. We just leave. <laughs> did you even get the impression? I did. Well, the Queensbury Association's gonna hear about it. Oh. And consume better content. Once the teens are safely out of sh your shot, Robert turns to me. Were you about to actually fight that kid? <laughs> are you kidding me? I'd never hit a child. That would be despicable. Oh. Throw the rules at them. Though they always bolt. Nobody wants a Queensberry section throwdown. Oh. But full disclosure, I may have been a. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't even have to know the rules. You just make them up. Come on. Let's get out of here. Uh... Yeah. Robert and I cool down a bit as we walk back to the neighborhood. Look, I'm so sorry. I get really into the uh, art of filmmaking when I drink. It's okay. I think it's cool how much you like movies. To be honest, I don't know a lot about them myself. It sounds like you and I. When we first started dating. Buddy. I got so much to show you. You ever see any Sam Fuller? I haven't. Mm. Fuller's Cash. Thanks for the adventure. I like thanks for the dinner and the movie. Oh, you think I should go that one? Pay you. Pay you. Pay you. <laughs> Excuse me. Ad <clears throat> adventure is all I got, buddy. Aww. This was a very interesting night. I liked it. Aww. <sighs> Let's hang again soon, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Aww. Night, bud. Let's see how we did. I think we did better on this one. I think we can call this episode... We got History Channel, Food Channel, Whiskey, Crime, Bad Ideas, Marriage, <gasps> S-Rank. We S-Ranked it. Shows you I know how to date this kind of guy. Welcome. You've got dads. Ooh, a pack of socks. Dead butterflies. Hmm. Oh, 
wasn't for us. Whew. I think I think I'm gonna call it right there. No, you're an adult. You're a man. You have to make a decision. Oh, I'm still gonna bring it to Damien. I should take it over though. I just meant like I was thinking of being done for the night. Oh, well we we gotta we gotta finish this. Okay, fine, we'll finish it. Unless you want me to be and only go. Oh, let's go, let's go, let's go. On stream. <sighs> ah, Mr. Brushton. To what do I owe you pleasure? Whoa, how'd you know I was about to knock? Hmm. Um. I, I don't know. Oh, okay. Okay, anyways. I think this got delivered to my house by mistake. <laughs> worded letter to the courier service about this. Many thanks. I have a friend who does them. Hmm. Maya's telling me there's a secret cult ending to this. <laughs> I try not to pry, but what are you going to do with these dead butterflies? Uh. Would you like to? Yes, I'd like to see. Yeah! Aww. Look at all this stuff. <gasps> I'm quite proud of my little collection. Do all this yourself? <laughs> of course. I find it rather relaxing. How do you? Mm. It's simple. Here, let me show you. Mm. These aren't really quite yet. They'll need to be rehydrated overnight, so they're easier to work with. I have some over here that are ready to pin. Mm, I'm just gonna hover behind them. I'm rather excited about this one. It's a turquoise swallowtail. He gently opens the wings. Yeah. It's a pretty iridescent green color. Hmm. Oh. And the pigment on this one is so nice, too. Anyways, pinning a butterfly is actually very simple. It just requires a delicate touch. First, I'll put a pin through the thorax. He just slides a pen through the middle of the butterfly and places the butterfly on a piece of styrofoam and he carefully arranges the antenna with the forceps and begins placing on paper and more pens and... Oh my gosh, it's hypnotic. You ever been to a zoo? Yeah. I have a frame here, it's like that. If you've ever been to the Henry Joy in Omaha, I think this one will look quite pretty. They have many there, but I'll need to let it sit for a couple of days until it's ready. And then what? Huh. Oh, I remove all the pins and put it on display with the others. Oh. That was really pretty. Mm. Uh, yes. That's a little more fun. One of my favorites, too. Hands a small frame to me. Oh. Do you think... Miyamoto is a fan of the blue morphine. Yes. Here, I think this would look lovely in your home. <gasps> it might remind you of the water temple. I don't think I could take this. Mm. I insist, believe me. I have more than enough. Thank you. Oh. Oh. If you ever have an interest in pinning some insects yourself, you know where to find me. <laughs> I think I'll leave that up to you. I feel like I'd probably break them in my 
half of my butterfingers. Oh. Nonsense. You are very beautiful. Steady hands. You would make a fine taxi cab. Am I blushing? Tina locks the door and gives me a warm smile as I leave. <laughs> you take care of yourself, Scooby. Thanks for allowing me to share my odd little hobby with you. Welcome. You've All got right. dads. We've got some dads. Oh, 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 oh,